which is kind of interesting about this digitizing life thing that we've talked about. I just was always just there experiencing it. Yeah. I wasn't thinking about either documenting it yeah. for personal memory or how do, can I turn this into content? Um, there weren't, you know, there was YouTube back then and, you know, certainly Facebook and all that stuff was, was there, but it wasn't until maybe like the iPhone four where I maybe more deliberately took photos to preserve memories, but then also to post on social media and, yeah. you know, start creating something content wise. So, yeah. And of course now with the film photos and all that, we talked about, like I was on vacation with my family and I took uh, multiple rolls of photos of yeah. scenery and a light on a garage. Did you and feel like whatever. You were... And I took very few photos of my family. Of your kids, yeah. Of <laughs> your <kids>. wife. <laughs> You're like, yeah. oh. Because I'm like, well, I'm not going to, that's not going to be content. Yeah. Well, that's, oh, you just answered the question. Yeah. My yeah. next question was going to be, do you feel like you were doing that because you were pandering to content? Yeah. Right. But, well, and that and the, or the, the thing that we're talking about as well, which is the world out there. I have to sit there and ask myself, how drawn am I to the world out there that I haven't experienced or whatever because I see an opportunity to make content out of it versus yeah. I just want to go somewhere. I'm going to take photos that, um, you know, I, I don't necessarily intend to turn yeah. into Instagram post or a YouTube video. Uh, it's for the experience with me or my family or with friends, well, whatever. And I'm, I've convinced myself, and this might not be true, but I've convinced myself there's a middle ground. <laughs> and I think there and is. And that's why I, that's why I, I mean, I love documenting. Yeah. And I, you know, it might not necessarily be for content sake, but it is for content sake in the sense of scrapbooking. Yeah. Like I'm going to be the dad with the annoying camera in the kid's face all the time. I'm going to, that's just I think there's value. There is value to that in that to me. Yes. And so, I mean, that's just, it is what it is. And my work's always going to have some form of that. Everything's got to have some kind of personal yep. connection to it. And I'm just convinced that there's a middle, like, <laughs> you know, I spend all this time getting cameras down to just the bare minimum. So it's easy to just, Oh, we're going on whatever. Well, the camera's just there. Yep. And there's not a lot of, you know, a thought that goes into it. There's mm -hmm. not, oh, well, I have to pack this, and then I have to make sure I have this, this, and this, and this. It's just like grab the camera and go. Uh, these flip things have been a re re revelation to me because, you know, you just grab one and you can just document. You, it's so simple. Yep. You have two hours, da 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 You know, the black magic even. Um, when, you know, I've got, the, I've got it built out right now. And I probably need to unbuild it because I built it out to make a YouTube video. Yeah. And I made that. But I haven't used it right just for the documenting capability. Yep, and it's like the best Super 8 camera you could ask for. I really liked shooting with mine. Yeah, eat with the internal battery, knowing I'm it's gonna you internal know, not gonna and last long it's, and having it, nothing but like, on it. What you had two minutes of film back in the day. Yeah, so you know you get 15 minutes of of footage yeah. if you're shooting with the internal. It's like that's a plus. Cause and I, you're getting the filmic yeah. effect and you just, cause I, I've thought about, well, I need, I'm, I'm I need literally going to unbuild yeah. this after, yeah. after our conversation. Cause, cause I'm like, well, I need to, I need to put an external monitor on cause the monitor is yeah, hard to, to see. see. I need like, to put a cage on it so I can add the extra battery. And part of me is just like, I'm actually, I keep trying to find a micro four thirds lens yeah. that it doesn't even have to be a zoom lens, but I'm like, is there a 10, 12 millimeter micro four thirds lens that I can put on that? That gives me essentially a, 28 to 30, 35 millimeter, whatever the, whatever it is that, you know, I can just go out and, and, and shoot with it. It's like that thing's not stabilized. Right. So I have two lenses. I have a stabilized, um, it's a stabilized zoom lens, but it only, it's like a three, three, five. Yeah, like it's not easy. And this is a one, one, four or one, eight. And what is this uh, focal length? And it's wide, but it, it's like a little less. It's probably like 35 equivalent. Yeah. And I think it might be like a nine or something, but. And that's, the, I'm like, you know, something in the 28 to 35 yeah. range. No, and it works great. It's all manual, manual focus, manual clicks. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's as solid as a rock. It's, it's a, yeah, and it's, it's so a, small. Like, <laughs> right. That thing is little. And I mean, you know how small the camera is when yeah. it's not built out. So it's actually a pocket camera. Yep. And I'm like, 
you know, I'm, I'm like, oh, I want to buy a Super 8 camera and da-da-da. It's like, why? I know. You have a beautiful image. Mm-hmm. And it's so unassuming, and you can just strap it on. It's not going to be as data intensive. Yeah, carry it around all day. You throw one battery charger in your bag, and you're good to go for yep. a week. And you know, and then like the same with the film cameras. And so I'm just convinced there's a middle ground. Like, and I think these cameras are the middle ground. You have your so. phone, which yeah. is like I don't know, kind of. It's, it's just it's just not inspiring. It's just not yeah. inspiring. But and then you have an FX3, yeah. all you know, whatever Ray Dad or a Absolutely. little cinema camera or something, and you're like, this the, feels like work. This is what I use for work. Yeah. which I love doing the work. Yeah. But like I need something that just feels like fun. And then fun. it's like you and yeah, you can take out these bigger, you know, rigs or whatever and take them in and but it it yeah, if if you've got too much of a mm-hmm. build, then you're out there and suddenly you're like, "Oh, wow, this is I'm creating content." Yeah. I'm doing whatever. And I'm also when, just managing When the complexity. gear doesn't get in the way and it's inspiring and it's tactile, mm-hmm. there's just something your creative freedom kind of comes to the front. Right. And then, sure, can you use that for content? Probably. Yep. You're probably going to get something that's usable out of it. Yeah. But then it's also just like a great experience. Yeah. There's nothing. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I think, I think, you know, I think you'll see popularity and stuff like this. These old flip cameras, these little. Uh, that's the kind of thing with the Digicam for me, like a little Canon point yeah. and shoot um, that is simple it's auto like yeah. part of me is like i don't want it to be my phone i need it to have some character i need it to have yeah. some whatever and like a little canon power shot digicam that i can take you know when we go to uh the fair or the children's museum or our whatever it gives me a new different looking type of image it's a fun little camera yeah. to use uh it's not my phone but then it's also not a canon eos r for photos <laughs> It had been a golden afternoon, and I remember having the familiar conviction that life was beginning over again with the sunrise. 